saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right? So now, remember, they all came to, to bear witness to what he was doing, and now they're seeing what, he, what he's done. So now, when Yahawashi healed the person, the first thing he said was, Your sins are forgiven based on your faith. Right? It wasn't so much that he had healed him yet, it was that he had forgiven his sins first. And when they heard that, they said, This, this guy's speaking blasphemies, man. Right. Who, who, can, who can heal, who can forgive sins but the Most High? Right. We all know this. We have the order set up, the priests, right? They would take the sacrifices and go and do that, and, and the Most High takes the sin away based on the sacrifice. But who is this man that just say, Your sins are forgiven? So now they're looking at Yahusha with a keen eye and saying, hold on, we, could, we may have somebody we got to put to death here. Because <laughs> he's saying some things that just don't sound or seem to be right. So now it says in verse 22, But when Yahusha perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easy to say thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say rise up and walk. Right? So now here it is. This person had a palsy. It wasn't an easy thing to just cure somebody of the palsy, right? So when he says your sins are forgiven, your high shot looking at them is like, what's, what's the problem? You know, what, what's the problem here? I, I, I know what y'all think. What is it? Is it y'all thinking is it easier for me to say your son's sins are forgiven, or for this for me to tell this man to just rise up and walk, right? So he's putting two against each other, right? Because now the other, the latter, hasn't been done yet. He didn't tell the man to rise up and walk. They didn't observe that yet. And remember, this was somebody who couldn't walk himself. He had to be let down from the roof on the bed. So he threw that question out there just to have them plant a seed in their minds. Then he says, in verse 24, But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. And he, so I, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. So he let it be known that his authority had already been established. He already had authority from the Most High to forgive sins, right? Bolus, go to St. John, the third chapter. St. John, the third chapter. St. John 3, verse 35. So this is St. John, the third chapter in the 35th verse, which says, The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. Right? So the Mosai loved the Son, not just that he could come down into the earth, but he has given everything into his hands. He has come handed over everything into his hands. Right? So when we speak about him handing over everything or giving everything to Yahweh, what does that entail? Let's run out. Let's go to the fifth chapter of the same book of St. John. And the 20th verse. Right? St. John 5 and 20. What verse did you just read in chapter 3? Uh, St. John 3 and 35. And now we have St. John 5 and 20. Uh-oh. Check out the... Uh... The closing? Yeah. That's what I'm checking out with Shabbat. Yeah, they probably got to do a refresh. Okay. So those who want to teleconference, bear with us. We're going to do a refresh on the uh, 
live streaming, passed on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which would come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So now the fame went out so much, now you got people, doctors of the law, physicians, Pharisees, scribes, everyone is coming to bear witness to see this Messiah, this Yahweh, this Savior. Let me see firsthand what he's doing. All right. Verse 18. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what it's a lot. And when they could not find by what way that might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Yahweh shot. So here's a man we said with palsy. Uh, most likely he had possibly cerebral palsy. I'm not sure of the various different types of palsy, but we know this type of palsy refrained him from being able to walk or get around on his own. So he was bedridden or couch written that that's how they were able to move him and bring him to Yahweh shot. But it was so many people there, they couldn't get him in, probably through the front door, through the window or whatever. So they had to go up on the roof and lower him down into the midst of Yahweh shot by taking up the tiling. So it says in verse um, 20, and when he saw their faith, he said unto him, man, thy, sin, thy sins are forgiven. So based on the faith of not only this person, but the people that brought him there, he had forgiven their sins, right? So here is Yahweh He hasn't healed yet, but he just said that their sins were forgiven, all right? And now this is going to carry on to the conversation that he's now going to have with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, all right? It says in uh, verse 21, And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? So historically, they knew and understood the law as far as for, you know, when a man commits a sin, he has to go and get, either make repentance and bring a sacrifice to the priest in order for the Most High to forgive them that they themselves don't be put to death. But here is Yahweh without a sacrifice, just saying your sins are forgiven based on this person's faith. And they couldn't understand or comprehend how this man could justify himself in doing that. Okay. So this was a question that was posed, and now Yahweh understanding that this is now, you know, reason for debate amongst them about him. So this is what Yahweh said, verse 22. But when Yahweh perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. So now Yahweh has done the first which was easy for him to do, and now he knows to tell this man to just rise up and walk, it'd probably be a difficult thing for them who were there present at that time to bear witness to. So he's saying, which one is easier? Say his sins forgiven, or to, for, for him to tell him to get up and walk? Of course, for him to tell him to get up and walk is probably to their eyes something that's of a major task. And he's going to do that without ease, I mean, without problem. So even for him to say your sins are forgiven, they had to understand that Yahweh was dealing on another level, right? Why was he dealing on another level? These are the scriptures that we was just going into prior to the uh, live stream going down. So we read St. John, the third chapter, and the 35th verse, St. John 3 and 35, which says, The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hands. Right? So all things have been given to Yahweh Shah by the Most High. So now what does that entail? Let's read on in, in the book of John. St. John the 5th chapter and the 20th verse. So we read St. John's 3 and 35. Now we have St. John's 5 and 20. Because Yahweh Shah is going through how the Most High has now committed all things unto him. So this is St. John 5 and 20. It says, For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. 
for the father judges no man but hath committed all judgment unto the son. So we see that Yahweh has learned from who? The father. The father has laid it out. This is how you do it. This is how, why you do it. This is when you do it. So the son learned from the father. Now is coming to the earth and is given that power to do the same thing that the father is able to do. Right? So now the father has now laid that upon his son. All right? Also, go to St. John, the 17th chapter. Yeah. So, yeah. Locke, let me finish up in uh, the 5th chapter, because that 24th verse, I'm going to say that 23rd verse, um, rounds it out. So, I'm just going to finish in uh, St. John 5. I'm going to read all the way down to 23. It says, That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father, he that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Because he's coming on behalf of the Father. Right. right? It's just like someone who is an ambassador for someone. When they send a message out to go to a far country, he's bringing the message of whoever the ruler or the king or whoever it may be. So now when the ambassador comes to the president and he gives him the word or the greeting or the gift, when he refuses the ambassador, it's as if he refused the king. Mm -hmm. Because he's coming on behalf of that person who sent them. So it's the same thing that Yahweh is conveying now and said, listen, if you refuse me, then you're refusing the Father because the Father has sent me. This is not my word. This is the Father's word. He's given me all authority and power. Right? And a lot of people commonly think that that's far-fetched. But it's been done and it still is done. Because when we read in the history in the Old Testament, when people who had kings and rulers, they would give them a seal. Right? And say, listen, you're my... Uh, next in command. I want you to go over there and tell the people such and such. But how are they going to know that it's coming from you? You just take it and stamp it. Now, if they don't listen to you, it's the same thing they ain't listening to me. Because you are coming on behalf of me. So now, on this regard, on a higher spiritual level, your Yahweh is that same representation of coming in the, rep uh, the uh, perspective of the Most High. So he's saying everything is given to me now. I'm the one that going to, that's going to go out there and forgive sins. I'm the one that's going to go out there and bring forth judgment. Think about it too in a family. We have like the oldest sibling in the family. Mm -hmm. Parents may leave certain instructions then to give to their younger brothers and sisters. And they'll, they, they, the oldest brother or older sister may say it. And younger, younger brothers and sisters are like, oh, whatever. You know, listen to that. Mom and dad said this, that, and the third. It's like, it's still kind of like, eh, right. whatever. But all right, fine. Because right. they said mom and dad told me. Right. right. Exactly. And it was funny that 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 uh, dynamic, and even doing that, right, carnally on a, on a, on a on respect of a child, mm -hmm. those who don't really follow that order or even, even pay attention, you know what people will say, or the children will say, or someone will say, well, you ain't my mama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, because they want to just hear directly from the mother. Right. Right. But the message is being brought, which what the mother said. Well, who are you to tell me that? Right. And, and then they go to the mother, the mother to say the same thing. Or the father to say the same thing. Right? But just because of rebellion, they don't want to hear it. So they try to you know, ostracize the, the, the kill the messenger type thing. You know? mm -hmm. To add on to that authority, um, St. John, the 17th chapter. And the first verse. St. John 17 and 1, which reads, These words spake Yahweh and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, and thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life as to many as thou hast given him. All right? So now he's not only bringing forth judgment, Forgiveness of sins, but he's also giving eternal life as to many as the Most High has given him. So he has that power for the gift of eternal life. And it has to go through Yahweh Shah. Because this is authorized by the Most High. Alright? But keep in mind, this is something that the Pharisees, the scribes, and the rest of the people who are not filled with the Spirit, were not going to be in tune with. Okay? So we're going to go back to Luke the fifth chapter and now the 24th verse it says that that ye may 